All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I wanted to introduce uh, one. Uh, I believe Morgan has both Stevens in here. Uh, I'm going to be passing off this next panel uh, to my good buddy, uh, mentor, uh, my protege. Uh, he came to me, you know, fresh out of UCLA business school and said, you know, hey, big bro, how can I help? How can I be on? Uh, I want to start working with portfolio companies. You know, I want to start investing. And so uh, without further further ado, uh, a Crossroads native, a, a L.A. native, uh, pretty much the same journey that I've been on and you know, one, just kind of proud to be able to build something where, you know, ultimately you'll see this guy's face more and more uh, and not mine, you know, dealing with the portfolio companies and investing as well. So without further ado, uh, my little bro, my dog, Steven Johnson, you got it, baby. All right, man. Thank you so much, Baron. I really appreciate, I really appreciate it. You know, all the hard work that Big is doing for this great summit day. We have a great panel uh, for us right now. Uh, you know, as Baron said, my name is Steven Johnson. Um, I'm super excited to host this very important conversation on building the new future. So we have with us today our panelists who are Nan Wang, who is the CEO and co-founder of Sleeper, which is a fantasy league uh, platform for sports and games. We also have Taylor Neiman, who is CEO and co-founder of T Toucan. Um, so definitely check them out. It's a, a new take on learning a language while you're online. And then Stephen Wolf Correa, uh, CEO and co-founder of Encantos, an award-winning educational technology company. So very happy to have you guys here with us today. Uh, we really look at these companies as kind of the graduates of big. They are, you know, kind of farther along the, the startup cycle, let's say, uh, and runway than, you know, a, a traditional startup maybe early on in the stage or early on, they've already raised a lot of capital from VCs. So we definitely want to jump into how they're doing, um, how they've raised capital, what impact they are having in the community right now. So as I mentioned, the title of the, of the, of the session here is Building the Future. So I wanted to start off with a question that I'm really going to kick to each of our panelists today. And that is, you know, just to get some perspective on where you are coming from, what you're doing now, and how all of those things come together to build this new future in the way that you envision it. So I, I would love to start with Taylor, um, just kind of give us a little bit of background and what you're doing and where you're headed. Awesome, thanks so much, Stephen. It's so awesome to be here. Um, so as you mentioned, Taylor Neiman, co-founder and CEO of Toucan, we're a new way for you to learn just about anything as you go about your day. First, starting with a browser extension that you can download for free at jointucan.com. Um, we've been within building Toucan for the last 16 months or so, so still fairly new, but we've raised $3.5 million to date. Awesome. Thank you so much, Taylor. That's a huge accomplishment. Congratulations on the money that you've been able to raise and the impact that you're making. I'd like to kick it over to Nan for you to give us a little bit of history and what you're doing and where you're headed. Sure. I'm Nan Wang, one of the co-founders and CEO of Sleeper. Uh, what Sleeper is, it's a social sports app, and it really came from my own experience growing up with my co-founder. So we moved away in third grade, but we used sports as a way to stay in touch. He would send me trading cards on my birthday. We had a fantasy league that he started that's been around for 20 years. We had a group chat where we smack talked each other and we shared content. And so what we wanted to do was build a social experience around sports and use that as a way to bring the world together. Uh, the company's been around for six years. We've raised $30 million, um, Series B company, 23 people in the Bay Area and growing. Huge accomplishment again. Hopefully those who are, who are tuning in and streaming this are paying attention to these entrepreneurs. They are rock stars in their fields. As Nan just mentioned, he raised $30 million. Um, hopefully you guys can connect with, with him as we move forward with this and learn, learn from his process. Uh, another question that I wanted to bring up is, you know, to Steven, uh, maybe just give us a little bit of feedback on, you know, in Contos, you know, what it's, what you have done, what you are doing and where you see yourself going. Sure thing. Well, again, thanks for having us, Stephen. And, you know, just shout out to Baron and everything that he's doing to support entrepreneurs in this community. 
Um, Encantos is a subscription-led blended learning platform. We create direct-to-consumer brands that are focused on teaching kids 21st century skills. So think of us as building a portfolio of brands, and our first brand is the number one bilingual preschool brand called Canticos. Our second brand is a brand called Tiny Travelers, teaching kids how to be citizens of the world. And we have more brands in the pipeline. Um, but this was really identifying the need that 21st century skills aren't being taught in schools. When you think about the learning, literacy, and life skills that kids need to learn, they're not going to be taught that in schools. We think that there is going to be such demand, especially now that COVID has hit, um, for parents to really take control of what their kids are learning with supplemental and enrichment brands. And that's where Encanto's place. That's a great feedback, especially given that we are in COVID times right now and you know, kids are learning from home. Everyone is doing Zoom sessions all day, working from home. I have children myself. Um, you know, it's not easy for sure to to provide to become a to, to become a teacher on top of becoming a, on top of being a parent. So, start off with the conversation back to you, Stephen. With you know, what are you seeing in the market with your particular company? How has COVID impacted you all? How are, have you needed to pivot at all, or has it really been a blessing in disguise, given your business model? Sure. And, you know, I forgot to mention, you know, the fundraising to date, you know, we've done 2.8 million to date through two convertible notes. And we have um, not yet released the public numbers, but uh, we have closed a series seed round, which we're very excited about. So stay tuned for news on that. Um, but it's a really trying time. I mean, when you think about what we're going through in terms of COVID and a K economy, we believe that we're going to start to see also K education. So if you think of anyone with means, they probably are creating learning pods. They're hiring teachers to teach their kids privately so their kids don't fall behind. But the majority of kids in America are certainly, they don't have those advantages. And one of the key things that we see is just incredible demand for supplemental learning. And you're not just gonna see a lost school year, you're gonna see a lost school decade. And so when you have over 50% of kids in America that are diverse, when you understand that low-income communities don't have access to education the way everyone else does, when you think about the digital divide, these are the truly trying times for parents. And so we believe that by creating these direct-to-consumer brands so that you actually have something that is going to be of substance for the parents so they know that their kids are learning something, but for the kids, it's entertaining and engaging so you actually have the best of both worlds. We believe that this is going to be a really important time for EdTech. So well said. Um, again, this, I want to push that exact same question over to Taylor because you're kind of in the same area of edge. You know, is, I would consider it. Would you consider it an EdTech company, Taylor? For sure. Definitely. Yes. You know, so more people are online, more kids are online. How are you leveraging more eyes online and more eyes interested in being educated in that plat under that uh, medium? Yeah. So what's super interesting about Toucan is we actually layer on top of existing behaviors. So if a child is browsing Facebook or on Twitter or binge watching Netflix, like we layer micro moments of learning on top of that. So no matter what you are doing while you're browsing the web, you are now learning something while you're doing that, which we think is a really interesting way to meet people where they are, but also not have to steal time out of people's very busy days to get them learning and learning a new skill. So important right now, right? Just that ease and that accessibility to education. And I would imagine that your customers are seeing a lot of success with not having you know, this traditional layer of education, having to sit down in one place, having a, you know, a person lecture to them or at them and just being able to browse the web and learn while they go. That's what it really set out to me about your product. Uh, Nan, to push it over to you. I mean, how would you describe Sleeper, right? What types of consumers do you see coming to your platform? What are they interested in? What value are you providing to that community? Yeah, we're, we're trying to reach every fan because I think our mission is to connect the world through sports. And if you think about how people enjoy sports, um, the fondest memories are, are, are watching sports with your family around you know, the living room couch or playing in a fantasy league with your coworkers or a group chat with your college classmates that you know, allow you to stay in touch. And so that's the experience that's missing out there. Right now you go onto a website, you read an article and there's nobody to talk to about it. Um, if you go on Twitter, unless you have a million followers, nobody's engaging with you. And so what Sleeper is providing is that outlet for fans to engage with each other and to strengthen friendships as a result of sports. And I think it's extremely important. So nowadays, especially with COVID, when people are isolated 
and at home, they need that level of escapism. They need a game to watch or somebody to talk to. And as a messenger app, we facilitate those conversations. This year, we uh, we rolled out um, voice chat on our platform, and we saw over 2 million minutes of voice chat consumed on the opening weekend of NFL alone. And so there is this burning desire for people to reach out to each other, um, to have a social experience around sports that allows them to escape from their kind of day-to-day -day activities. And I would imagine, Nan, that there's you know a lot of emphasis on community, right? So would you say that the platform that you that Sleeper is creating a community of of users? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's one of those uh, industries and spaces where, no matter where you come from, what walk of life, uh, you can identify with a commonality. So, like LA, for example, whether you're Republican or Democrat, whether you're rich or poor. When the Lakers won, everybody came together and celebrated together. And in in these days and times, I think it's super important for us to find commonality and to move forward. And so for sports, it's one of those rare, rare spaces where you can compete head to head on the field and afterwards shake hands, respect each other and move on. And so if we can do that uh, in a social way, I think it makes the world better. Whereas a lot of other social media sites that exist today, you're actually competing for vanity and it's creating anxiety for, for each other. And so for Sleeper, um, hopefully we can realize that vision and uh, bring people together over sports. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, from what I understand, right, most people say that COVID has just accelerated trends that were already happening prior to COVID, right? So the idea of creating community, not just in, in real life, right, on the boots on the ground, but also online, um, having these internet or web-based communities, it seems like your company is really well positioned to take advantage of that and really help that you know become more of a mainstream idea. So a next question that I would have for uh, my throw to Stephen. Um, so looking Contos, what would you say? I mean, you know, you're in education, right? I was mentioning to you offline that my background is in education as well. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of pain points, right? A lot of kids are not happy with their experiences. Parents, for the most part, are becoming disgruntled with you know the whole system as it is. You know, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of things that you've used to really inspire yourself or have been inspired by to create, you know, to co-found in consoles. Can you speak a little bit to how you see what you're doing now as you know, maybe five years from now, 10 years from now? What type of impact would you like to make in, the, in this future that you're building? Sure. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we believe that, you know, kids learn through play. It's not that complicated, right? You need to make sure that kids are engaged and entertained. And we believe in the, you know, part of our whole methodology is something called story teaching, that we believe that stories were kind of like the first ways that people used to learn. And so when you think of where we are today in 2020, you know, kids look differently today. You know, kids want to be a part of different things. They want to see themselves. And when you have 50 plus percent of kids being diverse, you do not see yourself. That's part of the big issue, right? I mean, you know, just look at this, you know, beautiful panel, right? Even if it's virtual, but you have, you know, wonderful diversity here. There's not enough representation in entertainment or in education. So we really believe that from one part of entertainment, you know that people are just hungry to see different types of stories, whether it's black, whether it's Latino, whether it's Asian, like, you know, power women. I mean, do we really need another princess? I'm sure, you know, Taylor wants to see, oh, hey, for her kids, here is, you know, a story of a little girl becoming a CEO, right? These are the kind of things that we want to see today. So we think that we're building a next generation entertainment led ed tech company. And I think mm -hmm. that's really the key. You have the best of entertainment, the best of education, but it's powered by technology. And the key thing is really doing blended learning because I have you know, two kids. You do not want your kid on a screen all day long. So it's critical that you actually have both digital and physical. And the fact that we're infusing that so you have an app experience for our you know, number one bilingual preschool brand, Canticos, learning how to you know, have learn two languages at the same time. But once you're done with the app experience, that continues in the physical world, either with books or with a subscription box or with other types of products. It's critical that you actually have both digital and physical. Yeah, I, I love that answer. You really served up kind of the next direction I wanted to go in, in terms of diversity and inclusion, right? It's a hot topic this year, especially where everyone's talking about it. VCs are talking about it. Banks are talking about it, right? Much more than I've ever really heard in my own lifetime. You're talking too much, man. We, don't, <laughs> we want to move past the talk, right? Make the, hot, make the wire. 
That's why we're so happy to have you guys because you're actually doing the work, right? So if there's any VCs out there, any any angel investors out there who are hearing, you know, listening to these entrepreneurs, these are great op great opportunities uh, to invest in. Taylor, I wanted to jump, like push it off to you. When I think about diversity, when I think about um, inclusion, when I think about really, you know, a perspective of the world that is multicultural, multifaceted, multi, just everything. Um, you know, I think about language and I think about food, right? So there's, those are kind of good entry points into understanding another person's culture. So I wanted to hear from you a little bit about Toucan. Do you think about it in that way? Do you think about how, you know, your products can help kind of bridge some of the cultural divides? A hundred percent. And really it, almost carries on what Steven's doing in younger childhood, all the way then we take on as the person gets older, the adult continues on, like learning a new language allows you to connect to other people, like breaking down those barriers, even if it is to talk about food or to say hello, like that then gets people into a mindset state of like having empathy for someone else and like learning what is it like for them in their shoes as they go about. So I think it's really important and really makes Toucan more than just a tech company and an ed tech company, but really like a mission driven company. And that's even, you know, on trend, right? So we talk about B corporations, we talk about, right, double, double bottom line companies, where it's not just about, you know, your profits at the end of the day, but also your impact on the world. So, you know, kudos to all of you for, for, you know, the impact and the work that you're doing to not just build a company and get these huge valuations and, you know, and, and bring a lot of money in, but also to make a difference in the world that you're in. You know, our time is coming to a close, but I really wanted to hope, you know, make sure I had some time for each of you to just give our audience a sense of, um, you know, your process as an entrepreneur. You know, you mentioned you mentioned early on that you've raised money. So just giving any entrepreneurs out there who are listening to this conversation who may be just starting off, what would your you know advice be? Maybe top three things or whatever you decide to share with us that may help that person who just has a great idea in their mind. They don't know what to do with it. Um, you know, I'll start with Nan on this one. Yeah, and I think I think the thing that's common to all three panelists here is that all of our companies have a central mission and a guiding light. I think doing a startup is is very difficult. Like we've been at it for six years, and the first three years of it, we were going sideways. Mm -hmm. And so you need to have a stronger calling than just money and success to drive what you do. Um, and I think having that guiding light early on, defining it, communicating it, and attracting the talent that believes in it will allow you to persist and ultimately break through. Um, and so that'd be my main piece of advice for everybody who's starting a company. So passion, guiding light, persistence, right? Don't take don't take no for an answer. Keep going, right? Absolutely. I'm going to throw it over to Steven. Same question. What are your thoughts? Sure. And, and I, I love the fact that you spoke about purpose. We're actually not just a B Corp. We took it a step further. We're a public benefit corporation. Mm -hmm. It's actually written into our bylaws. It's our legal charter. It's an S Corp, but it's a variation of that. So it's a public benefit corporation, just like a Patagonia. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say um, two pieces of advice. One, understand the three macro trends that are bigger than all of us. And I describe them as the first one is direct to consumer. Every business is going to have to go direct in some way, shape, or form. The second part of the macro trends is personalization, understanding first party data that you get by going direct, understanding how to personalize that experience. And the third is the business model around subscription. Every business needs to figure out some type of subscription recurring revenue business um, offering. And so that would be, I think, every business needs to think of those three um, you know, kind of macro trends. But then when it comes to the second piece of advice, I would say start now and it's all about understanding your customer. You do not have to have the perfect business plan. You do not have to have all the answers. Go out and test and learn. All the tools are there. You have the incredible opportunity to start a business today where you can go direct and get immediate feedback. We started Contigos, our first brand, in 2016 by putting out some books and putting out some um, videos on YouTube and an app just to test and learn. And over time, we got great marketplace feedback to the point where we now, again, are the number one bilingual preschool brand. So you do not have to wait for perfection. Just start understanding and talking and engaging with your customers. 
great response. We have about 30 seconds or so left. I want to throw it over to Taylor, you know, you know, just top maybe pointer for any entrepreneurs out there in the audience. Yeah. So in all about the team, surround yourselves with people that help you and benefit your skill set, and then also get started. Like the first version of Toucan was so ugly. It was beautiful, but it got us on our way. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, you know, I don't know how much time we have left, but if you want to put in the chat or someone will put in the chat for us how people can get in touch with you on your social media sites. Um, we're very grateful and thankful for you to be here, and I look forward to talking to you all soon. Thank you, Steve. All right, Thank you for having me.